My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And Warren Bernard is gracious enough to come hang out in Pittsburgh and uh, bring a bunch of tabloids uh, along the way for us to investigate. Man, Jim and I have big ass comic collections, but we're uh, embarrassingly devoid of big swaths of comic book and cartooning history. Hang this... your heads in shame, okay? <laughs> this is where you come in. This is where you come into the mixture. And we just, uh, we posted uh, not too long ago, an episode uh, showing off the spirit tabloid sections, which kind of like, you know, after the initial Sunday funnies, that was like a, an evolution in bringing comics to the tabloid format. Uh, we cannot give short shrift to the underground uh, weeklies the, of, of uh, the, the 60s and, and 70s that brought about a, a, a format and a medium for uh, guys like Robert Crumb, Gilbert Shelton, Spain Rodriguez, to uh, see the light of day. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, because the spirit, as far as I know, was the first real tabloid um, comic that I'm aware of, mm -hmm. okay? Now, you know, th there were uh, tabloid sections, yeah, but something dedicated to one and only one story, that spirit was the first one. So if you think about what it did, it was actually a comic book and tabloid format, which is more what these guys are doing okay so what what, I, what i've brought today so here on the left we've got the east village other okay with the same cover as this is the last issue of gothic blimp works and actually the hardest one to find number eight it took me n number of years where and was large to go ahead and track one down i had the first seven issues this was this was a tough one so what i thought we would do is we'd go through a typical issue of the East Village Other, just to see what a, what that paper, and by the way, it had that and the Berkeley Barb, and there were a handful of others, but I think the East Village Other and the Berkeley Barb were the two with the best underground cartoonist representation in them. Most yeah. famous, most yeah. famous. Now, now uh, before we get into it, I just sure. real, real quick question, and I'm putting you maybe a, a little bit on the spot, but I know you uh -oh. have these, and, and, you, and you might have committed it to memory. Yarrow Stocks comes before Zap Comics. He did three yes. issues of Yarrow Stocks. Right. Uh, this is 1968. Do you remember the date of Yarrow Stocks? No, I don't. Because I'm and curious, like how how much after this is. But no, I, I don't remember that. And um, Yellow Dog Comics, which was also on newsprint, also came out at about this time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out around this time. I was just curious, yes. like the pre because Yarrow Stocks then Zap, and I was just curious, like how. How, uh, well, I think um, wasn't Zap One or Zap Zero in '67, so that was the year before. Okay. Okay. But but the East Village Other had been printing the underground comics for for a while at that point, point. Um, and and also you know you, you have to go out to Texas and um, really talk about uh, what Gilbert Shelton was doing with Wonder Warthog yeah. in the drag magazines right. and his two. And by the way, I think both of his issues of the Wonder Warthog magazine, which I should bring for you. All right, came out before Zap, before the first Zap. Sure, yeah, okay. and, he, and he was doing work and help. And... Right, right, right. So anyway, so I, th I thought it'd be kind of fun to to walk through these these two. So why don't we um, why don't we start with the East Village Other, because the Gothic Blimp Works. For those those people that don't know, this was strictly a tabloid of comics, and this was an actual underground newspaper. It's so okay. funny, like like that sucks. To me, it's like it, yes. it came. It came with the hand lettering, the very sort of iconic to, to me, uh, Robert Crumb, you know, serif font. Why would you ever make that decision? No wonder they only lasted eight issues. Right. All right. Well, for me, the, what I love about this is I love the shape of the vacuum cleaner. Okay. That for whatever the reason is, that just that that just cracks me up. Oh, like his lighting and in, in the hatching. I I, you know, I've never talked to the man, but I imagine like the. The sort of um, compromised nature of his vision, you know, you see him in his glasses, his eyeballs are all magnified and stuff. Yeah. I think he has some knack of like softening his focus and putting those lines mm. down to like achieve what is just like a fl flat gray to him and just like these little chicken scratch marks, man. It's right. I, they they all have meaning. Ready? Let's do it. Okay, so this is the typical underground newspaper of the 1960s. Oh, look. Timothy Leary. Who else would you expect? <laughs> ah! And over here, I'm pretty sure this is a Leslie Kabarga, um, Betty Boop. So, um, uh, and I've never heard the, that name. 
Leslie Kabarga, he he did animation. He did this great book about Betty Boop in the nineteen was the nineteen seventies, and did a lot of uh, commercial work about at that time. Um, so I've I've got I've got some of his stuff, and it it does look like his work. Uh, he was he was fabulous. All right, ready? Yep. All right. Laughing Timothy Leary. Come on. There we go. Oh my God! Look at this. A little, A.J. Weberman, for those of you who don't know, okay, he was the first self-proclaimed Dylanologist. All right, so his, he used to, he was the first one to go through Bob Dylan's garbage to see what, because Dylan was living in, in Greenwich Village at the time. Our, our, uh, our comic book audience is strictly fluent in comics. Right, so I realize me, let me, that. Let, let me break it down to them. Uh, so this guy is like Ken Perill. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway because uh, i was a bob dylan fan so that, that's actually interesting and here we go kim deitch amazing beautiful page stories at, at this time uh, of, of kim deitch and spain rodriguez like sharing a flat you know some three floor four floor walk up and they come home one day uh, Kim, Jay, Jay Lynch comes to, to visit, goes up to uh, their apartment, and there's a big chunk taken out of the door where the lock was, and he just looks through that, that hole, and Spain Rodriguez is sitting at a table, like, holding, like, a 32 snub nose, like, just, like, <laughs> like uh, just waiting for crackheads to, to come in. <laughs> New York was, a, that's, that's pre edge It's a whole, whole, whole different thing. So, um, and, and I think yeah i think one of these yeah actually the gothic blimp works has a great jam page in it with uh but this is anyway and he's still doing great work yeah and just growing is, as an artist it, yeah it, uh, unbelievable that here it is you know 50 years later and he's still cranking out fabulous work nice kim deitch uh, i don't know who that is oh bill graham yep that's the New York I remember from the 1960s and 70s. Look at those cars, man. Yeah. I love all of this, like, uh, <clears throat> almost throwaway lettering, hand lettering. There was some on the previous page. Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Spiegelman. It's Spiegelman, yeah. Yeah, wow. like, like I was going to yeah. say, Spiegelman did some stuff, like, in yeah. Wits End that had this kind of, this kind of artwork, yeah. very rough. Yeah, it's Spiegelman, right. So, and Spiegelman doing pornography down here, I guess. I wonder if Spieg Spiegelman was uh, working for Tops then. Ooh, you know, that I don't know. I don't know what the... And here you go. Here's your man, Spain Rodriguez. Trash man. Agent of the Sixth International. What's great is this is a serialized strip, but one week d does not flow into the <laughs> yeah, next right, week yeah, very, yeah. very easy. Yeah, it's kind of like, wait a minute. What what just happened? The uh, the uh, I love this. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. The the other noteworthy thing is that there's a price tag on, on these on these uh, weeklies, and I guess just from you know from what I know of you know the free weekly alternative press, like I thought that this was just an early version of that, but you you had to buy this. Yes, you had to buy this, right? And right. I say that just because it's like you know peace, pussy, pot, prosperity, like yeah. you know this this kind of rhetoric. If that shit was like free and easy for little kids to just scoop up on a corner box. I could see that being trouble. Ah, uh, for the 60s. All right, anyway, love that love that panel right there. Here's some more nice... Yeah, more of the hand lettering. Very right. timely stuff from a person <clears throat> named R.L. Jones. Yeah, I don't know who that Lost is. Lost to the ages. But it's it's also... It's our buck minister Fuller, the man who gave us the geodesic dome. So the very odd stuff would turn up in here. Ads. Look, Jane Fonda and Barbarella. Godard. Godard. Is that the monkey's movie head? You know, it very well might be. Hey, about that time frame. The fuck, man? Virgil Finley popping up in this? Yeah, no, it's uh, definitely a ripoff thereof. A lot of stippling on that page. Yeah. What drug do you take that like makes you settle down and be able to do that? Look at this. Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Joni Mitchell at Hunter College. I was going to say, is this some 42nd Street stuff? But it's 46th. Let's see. I 
think that that's it for the comics. That's so, fine, man. We can still roll. Oh, here we go. This. Trina Robbins. And there's more Art Spiegelman right there. So, so shoujo manga would have you know have what that's, flying that's what this reminded this. me of so much. I was going to be like the first manga influence here. <laughs> Boy, the reproduction's nice too. I always think of newsprint as being you know lousy, but it's really sharp lines, really nice. No, now it's lousy. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> back then they knew what they were doing. So anyway, so it's it's real cool to see the Trina Robbins and the Art Spiegelmans yeah. of the world popping up ju just in just in an issue of this stuff and then you know you get back here free sex books male nudes you know now that's a 42nd street shit oh yes yeah absolutely wheeling and dealing Ma making sure that the damn paper only costs 15 cents and not 35 cents or whatever all right so now let's take a look so the underground cartoonists in 1968 got together and they did the gothic blimp works do you know who put this out don donahue or somebody no, it, it was uh, the same. Uh, it was uh, Von Baudet and um, and Ron Crum. Turner. Yeah, so so uh, they put their money into this. Yeah, right. They put their money into this. Yeah. Wow. So you know, look at all this great Crumb stuff that was in here. This is another one of those examples, like the Spirit tabloids. You lose so much when you, you break really it do. down. It is such right. a different experience to yes. see it at this size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and I, I have a I don't have a, a top drawer underground collection. But I've got enough that it's, you know, I've got a bunch of good stuff. And, and having the Gothic Blimp Works to me is critical because of exactly what you're saying. When you do, see this do stuff. Do you have all this, eight issues? Yeah, I have all eight issues. Okay, next time, man. We're going to go through uh, issues <laughs> one through seven. <laughs> yeah, I've got all eight issues. Yeah, 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 That's not a problem. Look at how bizarre this shit is, man. Just falling swastikas. Yeah. And then they find out that it's just, it's dudes. <laughs> it's so weird, man. Yeah, so... Uh, Think about it. All the times you would see this reprinted, it was on a page like this. Yep. Okay. And the, the, the whole, as it was with the spirit tabloids, the experience is totally different. There we go. Look at, look at this lettering. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, his I'm loving, his, I'm loving his, this stuff. Okay? His lettering is untouchable. Just fabulous. And then Vaughn Baudet, who, by the way, some people may chastise me for this, but I love Cheech Wizard. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. It's a nice one, Baudet stuff. I loved his stuff. He would try to pull in these other textures, and like it was always dubious whether it would reprint well or not. Yeah, I was just looking at this and wondering about it, if it's like a grease pencil or some kind of a charcoal pencil or something that he's drawing with. I think a bit, like a, just an HB can... Because, can, I mean, it's only black line you're going to get, so it's going to show up dark as fuck. Right. But he's the guy who would, like, you know, he would use whatever kind of markers he could get, his hands, you know, those those carcinogenic markers that ain't of, haven't right. been available since the 70s and shit. And, and, oh, by the way, I think we should point out that without Vaughn Baudet, you would not get a lot of the graffiti art That's for that, sure. that came out of the New York, particularly in the late 70s, that you even see even into today. So a lot of the color renditions and a lot of the shapes and things like that Baudet was the one who, who put a lot of that on the map with the stuff he did in Cavalier and in National Lampoon. Yep. Evolution of the bubble letter and stuff. Oh, my God. Oh, God, he was great. And here we go. It's Several pages of Baudet. Yeah, three pages of Baudet. Maybe maybe the more money you put into the... Three and a third. How how strange is it that it... Yeah. You know, that it... <laughs> it's, it's so odd. Yeah. And then there you go. Little Spain, more Spain Rodriguez, and I chose this one not only because of the the cover repetition, but here's more Spain Rodriguez. I bet that's how it worked, man. You put you the more money you put into the pot to print it, you, the more pages you get. Yeah. <laughs> this this is just, I mean, just this whole thing. This is just great, and it's built for this size. Like you know, the right, graphics, Fanographics it, it does the Lord's work by just keeping the shit in print. Right, but. When you reduce this, what right. are you looking at? Right, sure, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or, or, or how about the sequence of, of this guy's eyes looking back and forth, okay? You, you, sh you shrink that down to half of this, and you're not going to be able to tell what's really going on in there. So you really have to see these at size. Great pages. I'm, 
I'm a big spin runner, and I really I'm glad you did the trash man. And he believes tablet. in the circle panel as well. Yeah, I was yeah. going to point that one out. I love this stomp through just his onomatopoeia. I just great stuff. Oh, he put big ducats into the this this issue. Yeah. And just getting as much in as he can. Yeah, this is. Um, there it is, the iconic joint. Yep. This is a great issue. Come on and get it, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ju just this, okay? And I wonder, like, I mean, is this head shop stuff? Or could you talk a newsstand guy into doing it? Like, was there some form of distribution? Uh, you know, um, the underground comics themselves, the only place I ever found them was at the head shops. Yeah. Okay? There were no real comic shops. The bookstores didn't, didn't carry that. At least the ones that, that I went to didn't carry that. Victor Moscoso said that the uh, the distribution mechanism was created like to get it into the head shops. Um, the comic people glommed onto the psychedelic poster. Yes, right, 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 right. So those were, you know, the distributors for that stuff, and you know, those posters they 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 were a very timely thing. Yeah, well, you used to, you know, uh, at least at the one head shop we went to, they had a big black light room. And, right. You know, so this is some really great lettering. You know, we pointed out Crumb's lettering and Von Baudet. All these, like, that was part of the tool set. Full cartoonist. For, for all these. Yeah, right. Yeah. Gotta be a cartoonist, man. Yeah, it's is... incredible to me how much lettering has fallen off in the tradition of American comic books. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It shocks me. Yeah. It's, the, like, it's it's the it's a blessing and curse of, of the credits box. Because, the, the you know, like, just having the name in the credits box is important because, like, now you want to stand up and... It, and, or you could become a fan of uh, Jack Kirby. But then when you see that lettering is a job all unto itself, well, I'm going to focus on these other pieces, man. Yeah. I, could, I could just get a Just the lettering signing. right there, okay? Just <laughs> And it's unique. It's, his, right. it's yeah. the Spain Rodriguez font. Right. Like, if you've seen that exact lettering anywhere else, you'd be like, oh, they were crib in Spain. Yeah, sure. And same with Von Baudet, same with Crumb. Like, uh, when Bill Griffith is teaching it, I think SVA, like, one of his 40 tenets is, like, don't look at how to draw comics the Marvel way for your lettering. Like, like come up with your own lettering style. Uh, on on that, there's a story that's told out at the Library of Congress that a bunch of high school kids came in, and there was a Walt Kelly piece out. And um, one of the high school kids asked um, Sarah Duke, one of the curators there, what font did he use? Yeah. Okay. My, my editors at Marvel asked me that. <laughs> Here's your double-page spread. Man, this is the, the the Spain Rodriguez show. Isn't this great? I don't know. I've never seen this page, this spread. No. These are, these haven't been reprinted. Wow. These gothic blimp works. That's the thing, and and like you know the the title "Complete Crumb Comics." That's a dubious title too, man, because there's a lot of crumb strips that that are not in the Complete right. Crumb Comics, and they come from like Yarrow Stocks, and yeah, sure. might even might even see one in here. Right. There's there's more crumb coming up, but. Yeah. Look at the grandeur of this, okay? It's and, unbelievable. And, and if you fast forward to 60, if you fast forward to 2000, you have to go to the paper rodeo people before you see people doing double paid spreads like this again, okay? And we can do that at another time, which is what happened from paper rodeo forward. I've got a lot of that stuff collected in terms of tabloids that we, that we can look at one day. So, but, you know, this is great. I love this. Spain Rodriguez. Look at those. Look at this. Just all the shadows he put in. Oh yeah, I mean he's he's going he's going microscopic, and just 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 thinking everything through. None of it's none of it's dashed off. Look at this <laughs> slobber drool. Ah! He he likes <laughs> he, he likes to make the bourgeois man look like real fucking scum. <laughs> all right, so um, yeah, so this is still mm -hmm. Spain, and here we've got. Uh, but the good Dr. Worthen... Oh, so oh, this is all about the comics code. Oh, Cut, look at this. Cutting promos on the comics code. With a symbol right behind him. Right. So this is great. But the good Dr. Wortham put a stop to it. And, and ever since we've kept things in line, obscuring an, uh, an over-succulent titty, erasing over moldy corpses. Oh, so that that's... noise, that noise, what is it? You thought you had rid... You... <laughs> You thought you had rid yourself of us, Lester, but now we're coming for you. Gulp, and here are all the comic people <laughs> coming to destroy this this guy. 
I bet you these kind of comics, man, were like pinned right up in that Marvel bullpen. This is your team up bed of roommates, uh, Kim Deitch in Spain. Duh. Yeah, right. The, yeah. That's the other thing. They, they, these guys would do a lot of uh, jam jam strips. Well, th this is the start of a big jam strip, and wait till you see. So this is all Spain and Deitch. Spain and Deitch, and then I think this is just Deitch here. This is great. Nihilistic Research Lab. <laughs> <laughs> Little Waldo has evolved into having uh, cock and balls <laughs> lately. That's just so amazing, man. This is great stuff. This is... It's just like he so clearly internalized the stuff he grew up around, oh, you know? with his brother. Simon yeah. is dope. Yeah. He does really cool pencil, pencil art. And then here, oh, yeah. so, and look who's here. Yeah, yeah, Kurtzman. Kurtzman. So this is this this is the jam one where Kurtzman sat in. He he sat in on a couple, yeah. and and you can see uh, right here. Yeah, that that all looks like. Yeah. And you can find video of these guys working. It's not this one. Um, right. It's called something like End of the World Funnies or something, where they're each working on a perfect like square, and uh, this was reprinted in uh, Comic Confidential, I think. Like yeah. a piece of that. Um, just watching all the guys work on their strips and you could tell like like uh, it, they would be independent pieces of paper and you could even see like the yeah. line where they're pasted up yeah so you could you don't have to worry about like you know here's your contribution go off work on it but then these pieces obviously you got to be in the same room the same, well or at least close enough that they're passing it back and forth so this is another great double page spread yeah yeah, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the jam stuff. Like, it goes nowhere, and, and it's, like, you know, it's, frankly, unreadable. But just, like, seeing them all on the same page is, like, such a visual overload that speaks directly to my brain, man. Well, and also, you know, Spain Rodriguez and Kurtzman in the same room, you know. Kurtzman had great yeah. respect for these guys. Right. He, he gave a lot of these guys their first jobs in print, right. you know, kept in touch. Uh, they're all uh, motivated by the Mad Comics, like, at least the paperbacks. Sure, right. So it's paying it forward, it's paying it backward. There's a lot of, a lot of senpai kohai going on there, man. Yeah. So, so I was so happy to finally track this down, and this was one of the reasons. Amazing. Because of this jam page. Amazing. Which you normally don't get a chance to see. So, um, and then you have more crumb. It is. It feels like such a massive amount of work, like what we're seeing just on these two pages here. Yeah. And it's, you know, two pages of thousands. It's Yes. Crum uh, wouldn't draw too, too much bigger. It, these might have even been drawn to size from the stuff that we saw at the biennial, like the cover, you right. know, like it's, it's almost exactly to size as, as the print. Well, and um, once again, reading them at this size, even you know when they were reprinted in the in the uh, Fantagraphics books, they were a decent size, but they're still about half or a third of what what these pages are. And stuff like this fully gets lost. Like, sure, like it's it's, yeah. it's almost impossible to read this stuff. You just look at the mania, and, like res tip your hat, show respect, man. But right. you could at least read it and absorb this stuff I at love, this level. I always love Mister Natural. Mister Natural, what does it all mean? Don't mean shit. Okay. <laughs> So, here is uh, ending with uh, two pages of R. Crumb. And once again, man, I see the cuts where they, this is two pages. Yeah, sure. Two, yeah, yeah. Two pieces of art butted up once uh, against one another. That's pretty wild looking. This this is very uh, not crumb like. And it's not crumb. Yeah, I don't like, think like it, it looks. Like by the lettering, like that's Jay Lynch lettering right there. Yeah, and uh, I'll bet you that that looks like Kurtzman. To me. It does. Yeah. It even has Aragones vibe to it. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's probably Kurtzman. Yeah. So, but but think about that Kurtzman and Crumb collaborating. And, and this is Art Spiegelman. I would bet you any money that that these little bugs are Spiegelman. Well, no, actually, I'll bet you that's Gilbert Shelton. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. So I'll, you would have won him some money. You should have bet me. <laughs> that, that's Gilbert Shelton because he he used these roaches. In um, Fat Freddy's Cat, right? Okay. Yeah, and that's definitely his. his yeah, uh, it's lettering. it's his lettering. And and by the way, it brings up a good point. All these underground cartoonists, whether it was Trina, whether it was Shelton, whether it was Rodriguez, whether it was Crumb, they all had their own fonts. They had their own handwriting 
that they used, and it made it, it made the whole thing, um, much much more personal. They're all singular okay. cartoonists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else you got, man? Well, let's see. So what do we got on the back? Oh. Now, of course, bad time to subscribe. Yeah, right. Exactly, because this was the last issue. In fact, it says right here. I don't know if you noticed it. So it says right here. Um, note the next issue of Blimp will feature a new design and format, and as far as I know, it never it never came out. You know what? But this this is the cover to a comic, so maybe it evolved into whatever the comic was. Where well, this I, is the cover. I, I'd have to go find out because I have the East Village other that this is the cover from. Yeah, but so it was I, a comic I, as well because I remember it in color. Yeah. So, know, all right. So high there tone it is. Comics or something. Gothic Blimp works. Yes. Okay. All right. So now, put that over there. This is, so what they also did with the East Village Other is they came out with just, let me just center this a little bit better. There we go, come on. We make it look easy, right? There we go. <laughs> you guys are pros. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. So um, for at least three, three years, 68, 69, and 70, they may have gone before or after, but the three that, I, that I've got are these comics issues the East Village Other put together. So, um, and look at this. They even put... You know, Crumb's handwriting on the on the front. Right, yeah. Okay. And so let's see what they have. Aha! Uh -huh, reprinting the same yep. strip. Reprinting the same strip. Selling old rope. This is a great one, though. Yeah, it is. We should, maybe I should scan this and and send it out and. Wow. Yeah. Well, Who this is, is this Spiegelman. guy? He's got shit in. This title lettering is unbelievable. Yeah. But it's Spiegelman. I mean, if if I had gone like that, I don't I don't know who I would have guessed. Yeah, you would have. It would have been like Drew Friedman, but it's like twelve years, fifteen years too early. Right. Yeah, that's some wild cartooning. Some scr also using the, uh, the the greatest screen tone. Yeah, your concentric circle gimmicks. Somebody sent me an image. Somebody sent me an image of Brendan McCarthy in a Judge Dredd comic using my wood grain uh -huh. in the background as like a warped sky thing. All right, ready? Funny Nazis. <laughs> I think this is like Ralph Reese or somebody. Could be. It's like Ralph Reese lettering. And he was he was kicking around with these guys. Or that could be Jay Kinney. Like, I always confuse his oh. work. Yossarian. Who the fuck is that? He he did stuff for the uh, East Village Other that I'm aware of. So it's nice work. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you run across these cartoonists that they work for a you know very short period of time yeah. and all of a sudden they're gone for whatever the reason may be. Gee, fascist follies. Hmm. Where has where have we seen this before? Yeah, right. The, the most depressing thing to looking through any of these old papers or magazines is how it's the same topics. Like like it's look it kills I, me. I, I was a fan of the um, science fiction undergrounds, and they had a very heavy thing about post nuclear apocalypse and um, especially environmental devastation. And you come forward a half a century, and it's like, oh, <laughs> here we go. Kim? Yeah. And, yeah. And, and Yosarian. And Yosarian and Spain. That's Yosarian lettering in that title gimmick. Yeah. yeah. That's great. There's Kim. Spain. For sure. God, it's raining again, huh? Yeah, okay, it sounds like it. Go. S. Clay Wilson in yep. effect, man. S.K. Wilson, Spain, and Yosarian. So the, these are all jam pages. This is so, like, because, like, it's so tawdry and, and, like, perfect, like, on 42nd Street, you know? Well, but, but the, the purpose of this was, if, if you think about what, what they were doing at the time, they were like, okay, you think sex is bad? We're going to show you how perverted it can be. All right? And they had no qualms whatsoever about doing anything they can to tweak the powers that be. Go ahead, we dare you to censor us. We dare you to confiscate that. And that's what's generating a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Look, smegma, man. Smegma. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not a new term. <laughs> Straight out of Mad Comics. Here we go. 
Wow. Yeah, this is a surprise. This is FM, and I don't know who that is. But this this is very paper rodeo. Yeah. Okay. So you, you've got to go... Some overprinting. So you, you've got to go forward, what, 30 years to get something of this aesthetic again. It's so wild. Isn't that great? It's uncanny how, how much it resembles that. Yep. We, I, I didn't think of it. I have two copies. I had donated my set of paper rotors. I have 15 of the 19 issues to the Library of Congress. And I found two, two of the issues that I didn't have before. And I didn't, I didn't think to bring it with me. Sorry. Maybe next I have time. some paper rodeos. Those are something we can dig out at some point. Here we go. I even enjoy the typography, like all the title typography on all these different articles. It's fun to see that attention to detail. That's. Let me see if I can hmm. do this correctly. Is fucking Bob Securiak uh, around in <laughs> 1970? No, it's someone S C H Murphy. I don't know who that is. Yeah. No. But, yes, it is Sikorak, but it's Richard Nixon as Charlie Brown, yeah. okay? Tricky dick. Plain nuts. Good lettering. You, like, see, this, this shit sometimes falls apart at the lettering portion. Yeah, right. Good for Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Let's see if I can put this back correctly. Boom. There. Okay. This is, uh, again, very timely. Prepare for world flip out. <laughs> we needed this like four months ago, Warren. Um, this looks like Bill Griffith, isn't it? Yeah, it's Bill Griffith. Playing with a brush. We don't often see him like, do nope. bold brush lines, usually a pen guy. And he's another one. I I've, been I I've been a online subscriber to Zippy the Pinhead for years. He's still doing absolutely fucking brilliant work. He's doing the strip daily and yes. doing a graphic novel a year. Right, yes. Yeah. Doing more work than he's, right. did, did, than he's done in his in entire professional life. And his graphic novels are fantastic. Incredible. And the Zippies are fantastic. If you want really good commentary, social commentary, check out his Zippies, okay? And then who is this? S. Clay Wilson. Oh, it's S. Clay Wilson, okay. With a pen. Yeah. Just using like a rapidograph, which which you don't normally see him do. No, it has a Gahan Wilson vibe. To right, it. right, yes, very much so. Here's Trina. Oh, speaking of Abby Hoffman. Yeah, still this book, of course. And look, the the Spain eyes from that one. The Spain comic, eyes, right? Yeah, they yeah, recycled. Yeah, it's nice seeing Trina in this. It does feel so much like some of that that manga, so, you know, like like the design of the page being so different than a lot of the strips that we've seen. Yeah. And then we, oh, oh that's definitely Gilbert. Yeah, that's Gilbert Shelton right there. I got that in uh, Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers number one or two. Reprinted bigger actually, so you get to see it better in the comic. Believe it or not, I had the opportunity to interview him at the um, uh, Lakes International Comic Arts Festival a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, I got a Wonder Warthog book, and he put this beautiful Wonder Warthog in it. And the way he drew it was, he would put a couple of things over here, and then a couple of things over. I mean, it, it wasn't like this and straight he ahead. It, w it wasn't straight ahead in any way, shape, or form. He would kind of dance all over it, okay? And it, it was really interesting watching work because I can't even draw a stick figure. So that's how I hear uh, Neil Adam Strauss look at this man rolling papers. Above, like, a thing for abortions. Abortion, yeah, abortion questions. Yeah, because it was illegal back then. Oh, was it? Yeah. Roe versus Wade comes later? 70, 73. This wow. is uh, 68. 70. So, wow, fuck, man. Yeah, so uh, it was... All right, so that's that. So now, the underground people got together in 1975 and for three issues put this out, which is somewhere in between sort of a zine and a tabloid comic, all right? And 60 cents for this one. 60 cents for this one, right, yes, went up quite a bit. And this March 75, like I said, there were only three issues of this, and I'm, I'm missing two of the three issues. I'm just a bad collector. But I figured I would grab this and just show you what happened, because this was kind of the, the swan song of the underground cartoonist in tabloid form. Right. Right, and here's 
Bon Baudet on the front. Loved his his color work. I just loved his work. Yeah. A, a palette totally unique. It's rare to see him uh, colored with traditional four color process. Right. Yes. You know, like in Heavy Metal and, and National Lampoon, he's playing with those uh, markers that we were talking about. Right. No, this is, um, I, look at, I look at, like the crow with all the four. Here we go. Uh, Here's, we're getting into some of the Air Pirates. Yeah, so Crumb. Bobo Bolinsky. In, co in the, color? This was always like just the weirdest, because there were about four or five Bobo Bolinsky strips. One of them is uh, Bobo Bolinsky sitting there in like a recliner, and it's just nine different views of <laughs> yes. him. And, like, like, I think at this period, Crumb talked about like just being like fully burnt out. You know, doing comics for five years hardcore, and it's just like I'll I'll give you something. So uh, Ted Richards, yeah, he's one of the Air Pirates. Yep, did a did a really good Seagar impersonation with uh, right D a Dope and Dan. Yep, and then uh, beautiful Trina. Oh, they even have a a real Smoky Stover page in here. That could be a vestige of Kurtzman's influence because I have some some Smoky Stover uh, reprints from like Blackthorn with a lot of um, Kurtzman commentary on them. Mm. So they might have been fucking with Smoky Stover on his uh, advice. And here's um, uh, sort of an ad for Dr. Atomic. No, I forgot who did this. Me too. Know. Oh, would, Larry Todd. That's right. It, it would appear a lot in... Um, uh, slow death comics. Yes, and, right. And like the environmentalist kind of. Uh, right. So here's a, and this is an ad for Last Gasp. Really nice uh, Trina doing a very traditional. Like Sunday page. Yeah, kind Sunday of thing. page type thing. Yeah, yeah. Great color on that. And you could tell that they. they Jay Kinney. They chose the color because like the color from one strip to the next is, is different. Right. right. And you can see there's, you know, all kinds of, it, it, it was this odd thing in between sort of a, what we would call a zine and um, an underground newspaper and a gothic blimp works, so. All these nice spot yellows in here. Yeah, all the little bits are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and it's funny, I can't identify this stuff. That's it. Is that Aileen? No, no, no. That's, um, oh, I should know who that is, but my brain is fried, so. Here we go. Comic review, Ron Barlow. Um, A review of Steve Ditko's Mr. A and Avenging World. That's awesome. That's pretty wild. And the, and the little Ditko appearance. So they, you know, they were cool. All right, the crayon box. There you go, Ed. Break out your crayons. Yeah, right. George Evans did this piece. Wow. Yeah, so it was it was it was odd on in many respects, but it it's worth looking at. And this is uh, Lou Myers. Who did a, his his stuff? He had a lot of commercial stuff. He was a single panel cartoonist, also. Fiat. Pip in the Fiats. Hmm, Groucho. I wonder who did that. Ron Barrett is the name. Yeah, I don't know. That's actually nice. And look, you think you could do better? Write the punchline, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, Bruce Jones. He was good. Yeah, it's a surprise. I know him to be a writer. Oh, a little Nemo page. Something tells me that's a little Spiegelman influence there. Yeah, I think you're right. That would be great to see that little Nemo at this time period, because when else are you seeing it at that size and in color? Right, and pretty right. nice and, reproduction. And, and at this time, sure. And so. it's trippy and fits right in with, with the other uh, strips in that. Very happy to take a look at uh, a little smattering of uh, underground uh, comics newspapers. And I'd like to get into this more next next time we kick it. Maybe we take a look at a few others. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, we, and we, you know, if you want to do all seven of the Gothic Blimp works, we can certainly do that. 
Uh, so anytime, and, and like I said, I just want to bring a little flavor. Yes. Okay, so that people, you know, if you think about this history of the tabloids, we're going to do one more. Yeah, let's take a look at, let's, let's, let's cut this video, mm -hmm. and let's uh, look at a more, you know, one, one final part to our, our tabloid section for this week. For this week, right, because this is still the 20th century. Paper rodeo starts off the 21st century, and an explosion occurs. Yes, cool. So, K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, hit the bell icon. We'll notify you when the next videos are available. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at the links below this video. Jimmy, we need to go find a web press printer, man, that could hook us up with some good discounts on, uh, on newsprint tabloid comics, dude. Give them their marching orders. Read more comics.